everybody and welcome to another class art lesson. So um, I, I understand that my videos have been upside down and sideways um, and the way that I think that's best to watch these videos is to watch it on your iPad because when the video goes sideways, which I need to do, then you can turn your iPad. Um, I did reset my camera so that you will be able to see it in this vertical way. So we'll see whether or not um, that works very well. Um, I hope so. I'm really sorry about the technology stuff, but these are free videos. I don't want to spend my time shooting video and editing video. Hey, Deb. Um, so um, I'm just trying to do the best I can. I hope you get something out of it. I'm going to turn comments off so that um, that's not in the way of your screen. And um, yeah, so we'll carry on. Uh, of course, the phone has to ring. Hopefully, my husband's going to get that who's upstairs. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what, just recap, because the last 15 minutes of video yesterday got caught. I do have a timer set for 40 three minutes so that will give me a reminder when I need to start winding up here. So I'm going to just turn my camera around for a minute and I'm going to show you the painting. This is the painting that um, I'm casting a shadow on here that we did yesterday and um, so you can see I'll just give you some close-ups here. This is everything's pretty dry now like there's nothing coming off on my hand. Um, I can, it's wet enough that I can still scrape into it. Um, I did take a um, charcoal, soft charcoal pencil and did some drawing into my mountain so I could have some of that structure back and um, drew a little bit about where I want my trees to go. So I'm just going to tidy up some edges um, first and then I'm going to talk to you about how I'm going to make the next steps on this. So I am going to, give me a second, I'm going to put you up in your holder so that you can see. Still looks like it's a bit cut off, but hopefully that's good. Anyway, okay, so um, I am going to don my handy gloves. Notice how glo clean my gloves are. That's because yesterday after I finished working, I cleaned everything up with my Armor All cleaning wipes. And again, these are, have um, that orange solvent, like uh, Citrusolve or something in them. There's no solvent in these, so they clean everything up well. And so um, I can reuse everything. I can reuse my nitro gloves. And we don't need this anymore. I will just put here my, I don't know, you probably can't even see that, my drawing that I had made. Um, are hanging out there. My value study, I think you can see just fine from there. So here goes. So I was trying to soften edges between things. So I was trying to soften the edge between um, on the photo, there's the where the evergreen trees grew up the side of the mountain. It's quite, I want a soft change there. Um, I wanted to have a soft change. I broke into each of the edges of each of my shapes so that um, so that they're they were they weren't hard. So I'm going to keep my hard edges for my focal area up here. Everything, like I said, is dry, a little bit dry. You can um, there's some fun things you can do at this point uh, when things are just tacky. Um, if you made a mistake, like this little piece of white I got on there by accident, I can just take a dry bristle brush and I can just muzz that out. So anything you don't like, you don't have to cover up necessarily. You can just take a, a dry brush and um, soften any of those things that you want to soften. If there's any big glumps anywhere, you can take them off if you want. Um, Okay, so that's pretty much good where I've got now. Um, it's too dry. I tried to um, roll some tissue paper into this landform here to make it more interesting, but it's too dry. That doesn't work. It doesn't take anything off. So 
I'm going to use that a little later on. So I'm going to put new paint on here and um, roll through it a bit to give it hopefully a bit more energy and life. I'm really glad that this area is dry now because it really needs help. Um, you can apply paint with a brush. Um, you know, you don't have to use one of those other tools. If you feel more comfortable with a brush, you can definitely do that, okay? So that yellow that I put on there, that's not really the color that I wanted. So I'm just gonna go over with some of this. I'm gonna have to make some. I don't know how much of my palette you guys can see, but hopefully a lot. So I'm just doing regular old painting here. I'm just trying to get the value. And notice I mixed the cold white with the yellow because I wanna gray it, because it's way back here. So that cold white will, will do that for me. And then I can do all the things that I do with a brush, basically, which is really cool. Um, and it, But you can see, where are you? You can see the texture of the brush stroke in there. So that's an option. Do you want that or you don't want that? If you don't want that, you can take your scraper and just smooth that out with your scraper. So if you look at that now, that's quite a different look than it was before. Um, I'll try to keep this up here for you. Um, okay, so that's one thing I wanted to do. Now the problem with brushes though, is you have to wash those things, which is a major pain in the butt when you're in the middle of painting. That's why, that's why the palette knives are so successful at this, but I'm gonna mix that yellow that I had there. Oh, my paint's a little tacky too. So I'm gonna add a little bit more cold wax just to soften that, meld those colors, make them, because there's solvent in the, in the uh, cold wax, you can do that. So I just want to now come back and get make this transition a little bit softer here, as it's gonna be underneath all of this stuff. And it might be kind of nice to add some movement with this brush and see what see if I like it see what happens there um, if I if it's too rough I maybe can scrape it I don't know I'm just trying some stuff right so there are gonna be branches and stuff in there so I'm not too worried about that I kind of like that yellow um, it is a dirty yellow um, which is okay because it's pushing it back um, I think maybe it needs to be a bit lighter though. So I'm just gonna add some white. So I have wet paint on here. So if I add white on top of that wet paint, these guys are gonna blend and will give me a little softer yellow, I think. That's kind of nice. And like I said yesterday, if you don't clean your tools off between strokes, that can be a bit problematic. So. This is also giving me an opportunity to play with the edge of this mountain so that it's not quite so straight, but this mountain is really far away. Maybe I could change the shape of it a little bit more and just, you know, ease it on down a bit. I'll take some of that gray from the, that area and just kind of soften out, soften out that shape so that it's not so hard and not so attractive. I want this one to be hard and attractive, but not necessarily that one. All right, so I'm just gonna throw my brush in some solvent here in case I need it again. And so I've just cleaned it out. And uh, solvent can do some interesting things too. So I wonder if with this brush with just a little bit of solvent, I have something stuck on here that's really making me mad can maybe do something, we'll see. Anyway, you know, it's all guess, right? It's, well, it's all experience. I haven't had a ton of experience with oil and cold wax, so that's the thing. To question before I put these trees in, do I wanna do anything else with the bottom? But I think I need to get in um, to paint some of those trees. So I have a different palette knife today, and I'm going to try to put in the, the darks of, um, the darks of the tree trunk. And I'm going to make up, you can see here, I hope, some dark warm, and then here's some dark cool. 
This still has some yellow in it, this part that I just picked. When I was putting my paint away, I left bits of paint from yesterday. So there's a really dark cool. That's probably too dark. Just add a tiny bit of light to that. I hope you guys can see this. Because I think it's really important to see what I'm doing on the palette as well as what I'm doing on the painting. So anyway, so I have some of this loaded up on the edge of my brush, up oh, brush, palette knife. And I'm just going to kind of lay this in kind of where I want this tree to go. And how you load your brush is your palette knife is really important. And like I said, I, I don't have a lot of experience with palette knife, um, which is kind of fun actually, because I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know how to do it right. So I'm gonna get some really unexpected kind of results from it, which might be kind of fun. We'll see. Trees aren't perfect in nature, so I kind of like the way that that's kind of broken there. Um, let's try to get a little bit more. So the one that's back there can be lighter and cooler because it's farther away. I want these all to look different. This one I wanted kind of leaning in to here. You guys who have experience with palette knives probably are laughing at me right now. That's okay. I can handle it. Oh, that was nice. And then let's get this third one. Uh, that one I think I'll make a bit warmer. I'm gonna take my warm into the gray and just change the color of that a little bit so it's different. And in my drawing, I kind of have these, tr these um, trees kind of doing some fun kind of leaning out. Probably shouldn't have that blob on there. There. Okay, that's better, a bit more control. And I wanted this one to be planted down here. So that's cool, I like the way that looks. Now I have little branches to put on and I just wanna get a sense of that. So let's see if I can do that with this. This is a really flexible blade, which is nice. It can sort of, I can make some interesting marks with it. Oop, that got a little thick. Uh, let's see. There. This one I want taller. Actually, I think I want this one going off the page altogether because that now separates the sky into two shapes. I had one really big shape here. So if this goes off the top, then that is kind of nice. And then I think this guy's just going to do its own thing there. Maybe even have some other branches. I like to make sometimes make these things disjointed a little bit so that they're not exactly touching where they're coming from, which is kind of fun. And this one I think I want on a different angle. So I'm trying to think of the angle. So these two are on the same angle. So this one I want to make on a different angle. So let's do it that way. And it's also cutting into the paint that's there, which is kind of neat because it's giving kind of a different kind of look to the way that mark looks here and I can any anything that I overshoot I can come back and um, fix with negative painting so here's a babier knife this will give me a bit smaller mark I hope where else do I want to branch maybe do I want one coming up here maybe that would be a nice idea and just to because that's a white space in there. That might, I might not like that. Anything I don't like, I can take out. So let's see, we put some of that up there. Anyway, these trees, are, this is just a start for these trees. Um, and I'm gonna go, this is dry now in here. So being dry, I can go back into that and scrape into that. So I have a skewer. And I'm just going to see about getting a little bit 
of that red underpainting shining through um, for the stem area here, just in little places, especially where there's a blank in the foliage there. Um, so maybe going into that foliage just a little bit more. Anyway, I'll show you what that looks like up close. Okay, hopefully you can see that. All right, so now that I've got sort of the base of where I want the trees to go, um, I'm gonna look at this landform down here. And um, actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back to my focal point. If I put too much attention down here, I'm gonna have to put twice as much attention up here. And that is not a grand thing. Um, I don't wanna do that. So I do want some cool darks happening. Remember, as we discussed in the beginning, um, what was gonna happen with this painting and we're gonna have to provide some contrast um, down into the painting. So there's some shadow areas here. And again, using this, it's gonna mean that it's gonna be less controlled, right? Um, so the sun is hitting it this way, and then so behind, um, behind where the sun is hitting, it should have a shadow down here. So I'll leave that. This is an upslope, this is a downslope. So I'm gonna take, um, what am I gonna take? Something gray, light gray, maybe. Test the value. Is it the value you want? That's a real advantage of palette knives. Um, so let me make that a little lighter to see if that's what I want. Still not what I want. That's more what I want. So if I show, if this is an upslope, this is a backslope. So maybe I can put some shadow happening down there. And maybe a transition. Whoop, a lot of paint went on there. Happening here. And maybe a little bit, blend that out a little bit. Put some shadow maybe here. That's too light because um, it's darker over there. So I'm just going to add a bit more dark to that paint. And there's these mat, this is a mountain and these are the, um, the way that the mountain's gonna work. So this is gonna be hit light down here. So I can just lay this now. This is a warm white that I've got on my palette knife. The places where that sun's gonna hit. And I'm gonna just massage those things. This, the top of this mountain needs a bit more definition. Pal I'm finding palette knife is a little bit of an awkward tool because it's in awkward hands. So I have to figure out how to make this right. So that sky is dark now, is dry now. So I do have an option to lay color on without it ha mixing and blending. Um, this tool that I'm using is a hard, has a hard edge, of course. And um, so if I wanted something like to use a something soft is for wet paint, but if you have dry paint, you can actually you, you know, use a harder tool. Uh, happen there, and you know I don't really want this to be uber descriptive. Um, I just want this to be interesting. So, here's a side of this. Maybe can get lighter. I'm just trying to get a little bit of three-dimensional form happening on here. And uh, see, I'm gonna have to play with this and try various things. I'm not gonna keep you here while I do that, but I just wanted to sort of give you an idea of what kind of thing was possible. That's kind of interesting because that's the same paint that I used there. 
So that's going to be a place where it's soft so that you'll be able to come in. It's not like this hard wall. So that's good. Th these whites look a little white to me. Um, so maybe I need just to tone those down a little bit so that they're not quite so white. That's nice. I'll leave that one up there. Maybe this one needs to go. Anyway, I'm, I will play around with this a whole bunch before I finish this painting and uh, try to get your eye to move all around the painting. And probably there should be something happening here and maybe a little bit over there. Anyway, I'm going to leave that for now. So that is providing a lot of contrast with that sky. I probably will come back in and reshape that mountain when this is dry so that I have a more interesting um, shape of mountain here. If I try to do this while it's wet, I might have trouble because number one, I don't have the right color value on my palette knife. If I pick up any of that light, I'm going to totally pooch my sky. So I like, I want to kind of make a short one and then a long one and then another little short guy so that they, they vary in size and difference. I really love the red that's coming through here. I think that's really cool. Um, maybe some of that light can come down as it reaches down into these forms. Perhaps. Just want an interesting shape so it looks like what it is and maybe a bit more of that right there so that that's a juncture between that point and that point. All right, um, so now I'm going to look at this. Um, I want to put some more paint on here so that I can do some texturing. So I'm going to try to use the um, I'm going to try to use the um, methods of cold wax painting as well as traditional painting. So if I was to come on here and add some more paint, this is no longer picking up any paint from underneath again, like I said. So I can get some interesting textures happening here um, just the way the paint is going down and I can um, I can use the edge of this put paint on to carry that shape over on this side one thing that really bugs me is when things change because there's a tree there that really that fries me when I see that in other people's work. So I don't want to do that to you. This, so now I've just made those two the same. So I'm just going to drop this one a little bit lower down here. All right. Um, now I put that down. I'm going to take some of the other colors that I made yesterday and are still good on my palette because of my little houses. And I'm just going to kind of mix this in here a little bit to change things up just a little. See if I can get something exciting happening here. Okay, I like that. Um, I can take a darker brown. This is paint here is quite stiff because I've, uh, that's a little glob that I had left over. So let's use that as some shadow. Remember yesterday we talked about how shadows work and how they follow the um, contour of the hill that's causing the shadow. So I don't want these all to do the exact same thing. Okay, so those are sort of coming down the hill. It will need a color change um, later on, but that's okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you this. So I've got fresh paint on there, and if I take a tissue and crumple it up, God willing, this will work, and just brayer that into that wet paint that I made. Can you see? It makes a, quite an interesting texture there. 
on the on the paint so I'll decide whether I like that or whether I don't like that whether it stays or whether it has to go but it's kind of an it's not adding di anything different in the value it's just adding an element of texture and I think that's really kind of fun when you get these that have lots of paint in them you can also use that as um, a drawing tool so I could put this down and wet side down and just transfer that paint. Can you see how I transfer that paint? Maybe there's a, a stem or something there. So that's a real subtle way to, um, to add some, some texture there. I'm wondering if I can do the same thing. If I fold it so I can see where it goes into the bottom didn't work so well there anyway but that's kind of a fun thing that you can do uh, let's see what else do I want to do um, I'm watching my time we're good um, I, I like this color change that's happening down here I like that a lot yesterday and I think I would like to do a little bit more of with that so I'm just going to mix a different green and just sort of get this broken color kind of thing a little bit more distinct. So now you can sort of see how the this area around this tree is acting. So I can also use this color to, um, let's see, what do I want to do? Get a little bit more paint, that'd be a good idea. I can actually come in and negative paint against this tree and make branches, make this tree look a little less regular and a little more interesting. So I could put maybe a little bit of this color, if I can get it in the right place on my palette knife, get a little bit of that to come into the tree here, break up a little bit of the monotony of, see there's these two things are doing exactly the same thing. So I can come and break one of them up I think I will break this one and just calm that down a little bit so now they're not all quite doing exactly the same thing. And I can do the same thing with my ground color here, right? So I can put little bits of this ground color and shape the tree negatively. That means putting paint behind something. So that's a more interesting looking tree than it was before. Needs a little bit more dark on it, I think. And this is where um, palette knife gets really interesting because, because it's so uncontrollable, at least in my hands, I can get some really cool happy accidents happening, which I think is really fun. And um, so I like the way that's going. This lighter green over here is a cool idea. So I'm just going to see if I can make up that green again. The nice thing about working with a limited palette is that I only have three colors to choose from. Yellow, red oxide, and Payne's Gray. So I don't have very many choices, so I can know how to exactly mix a color. I never exactly want to know how to mix a color though, because that would be really boring if the same color happened everywhere. So every time I make something, it's going to be a slightly different color, and um, that's going to be really interesting for the painting. Let's just add a little bit more light going up the side of that mountain, that mountain, that tree. So I don't want the darks to be too, too dark there. Um, and I, again, I will play with that as this painting moves on. Um, I'm looking at these marks that I made for this hill and I'm really unhappy with this very round shape. So I wanna to try to make, find that color. That's way too dark and it's too cool. I'm gonna to try to make that this greeny gray color that I had back here. I'm gonna to try to mix a similar color. Whoops, so that's still too dark. 
And I'm just going little bit by little bit because you don't want to overshoot in the wrong direction. That looks pretty. I put a little bit of that on. I see that's still too dark. So you can do the place test or you can do the palette knife test. And I think the palette knife test works really well. There, there's the right value. So you can see how this moves in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this into a little bit more of a mountain shape. That uh, I don't want a hard edge though. Um, so that it, it's more interesting um, to see from the viewer's point of view and maybe even needs to go up even more here. I like that way better. Oh my goodness, that's so much better. Okay, um, that's a nice part about this stage is pretty much everything you can do, you can make better at this stage. So I'm gonna get some more black and a little bit more ultramarine blue put in there. Um, it's a cool, so I'm gonna add my cool white. And I wanna go into some of these back trees again and just play with the shape. That's a really blue, too much ultramarine in there. But let's see what happens. If I just put it on a little bit, it might just add a nice, it might just add a nice touch to the dark that's happening there and just be a little bit more interesting. I like that. So there, I'll show it to you up here so you can see what it looks like. All right, so that was cool. Blue over here, do I want blue there? I don't think so. This is moving into the center of my picture. I think I want it warmer. So I'm gonna take my transparent red oxide. I want the same value though that I just mixed over here, okay? So I'm gonna mix the blue that I just used here with my um, transparent uh, red oxide color to get a little warmer color. Check it for value, make sure it's dark enough because it's gotta sit in front of these guys here. I wanna cover everything that I did before, but I just wanna make that a little more interesting. Oh yeah, I said that these guys were gonna come forward. So those guys, if they're coming forward, they can afford to be a little darker. So let me get a little bit more dark happening into here and make these guys go a little bit bigger. I love the mystery of what actually is going on on in here. So even though there isn't a big tonal range there, you can see that there's quite a textural range between these, between these shapes and this background shape, which is quite smooth. And the smooth is going to push it, push it back as well as the value. Um, and then I need something in here. So I'm going to mix a little bit more blue with into that color I just used and put a little bit of that happening in here. I don't want to really make trees. I want to kind of have the suggestion of some trees. So that's cool. Um, if where I showed you where I transferred that paint, if I really like that, I can just use my skewer. Whether I use the painted, the pointy end or the dull end will give you a different shape. So maybe some of that is kind of interesting there just to break in. There is a line here in the paint. I'm not sure how it got there. I did it obviously, but I don't remember how. There, I just want to cover up that. There's a big hunk of paint sitting there. Okay, so I think that that looks good. This tree is darker than those trees. That's more neutral, so that's gonna sit back from this one. Um, I'm wondering, I'm thinking now while I see this that I wanna plant this a little further down still, um, down here, so that it breaks this hill a bit breaks that hill a bit more. And then maybe these guys can sit back a little more. So this is just the, you know, look how I put that orange next to that green. Because that's a red and that's a green, they're kind of vibrating against each other, which is kind of fun. Um, I don't really want this one, though, place where my 
um, underpainting is showing or this one is too big also. So at near the end of the painting, I start get, looking around at these red things that got left and decide how much of that I want to leave and how much of that I want to let go. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. So I've lost the hill line there and then I reestablished again with that with that mark, which is kind of fun. Um, that tree should be casting a shadow over here. I'm going to soften that because I don't want a lot of intention happening there. And I said these these um, these shadows will start to get cooler as they move away from the object that's creating them. So I have a shadow that's warm. Where's my warm? Time is it? Oh, six minutes. I have a little bit longer than six minutes, but. All right, and I need to lighten that so I can see what I've got here. So if I have a darker shadow right near the thing that's casting it, that's how showers, shadows work. And this is grass and stuff, so I'm not sure you would even see all of, um, all of these marks. So I'm gonna just come back in and break some of that up with the ground color so that they're not so perfect, um, not being seen quite so, quite so perfectly. I can make lines in my, um, in my foreground if I want. I can scrape back to the red underpainting if I want. Um, I want to have a light side on these trees. So I've said these were aspens, so this is sort of a warm yellow light here. Let's see what that looks like. So I wanna go light against dark and dark against light. So that this is a middle value, so I'm darkening this highlight a little bit. Okay, and I can even go to a lighter warm color down here where the birch tree meets the ground. I like that. I like the way that looks. I don't want to do the exact same thing everywhere because we might as well have not done it anywhere. So I'm going to change that color to this warmer color, but I need it to be lighter than the ground plane that's underneath it. So let's see if we can make something that's interesting and different. If I put that on, are you going to be able to see it? Probably not. It's too close in value. So I'm going to lighten it again with my warm white. Check it here. That looks better. So I'm just going to see what happens. What kind of random kind of mark happens with this. And these are things that you can finesse uh, as you move along. I kind of like the straggly nature of these trees. They kind of just act as pointers. Some of these are too dark. So I'm gonna come back with that same light and say, where would, where would some of those trunks receive some light? So these ones that were really dark, I can just change them so that they're not so evident so that they kind of come and go because there would be some light shining on top of these a little bit like that um, maybe a little light here yeah that looks good except can you see this line here by the made by the branch it's the same angle as that that's a problem so I'm just going to break that down so that it's not so obviously the same. That provides a little bit of interest. Maybe have some branch that comes out behind some of this. Anyway, I'm not sure I like what I just did. I, so I can always go back with the sky. Well, except you have to make sure it's the same value. 
Always check your value first. Don't do what I did. Now I'm making mud in here because this is wet, but that's okay. Um, I can also do some drawing in here. Um, where did my pencil go? I have a, here it is, that charcoal pencil that I had. Um, it's not exceedingly soft, so you could do this maybe better with um, a pastel stick. Let's try to see what happens if I make a line with the edge of my roller here. Test it out here and see what it looks like. What happens if I make a line with the edge of my brayer here? That's kind of neat where this just picked the paint away from what was there. So I'm getting a feeling of a lot of different branches without actually painting any branches which is kind of cool. Here's some warm stuff. I want this just to kind of be a tangle so that you can't really say what's growing off of what. Bit much right in the middle there, but I like, I like the way that the branches are, are loose and unex, um, unexpected. So that's cool. All right. Um, Oh man, you can dink around with a painting like forever and that's not necessarily a good thing. So I want to try to be a little more careful about that. So as I look at this from a distance, I'm kind of liking what's going on. Um, there's quite a dark here from my pencil and I'm wondering, I'm thinking I need to leave that there, even though it doesn't really have an explanation for itself. Maybe I'll take some of that blue that I put in the darker blue and put some of this into this mountain and see what happens. You can pick it up and move it. I want this feeling that the mountain is kind of coming up and going down like that. Maybe a bit of a shadow in here, but I want it to be not hard edged. So if I, I've just added new paint on top of new paint, so I should use something soft to bleed that edge out. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Not sure I wanted this exactly there. Where else can I put some of this darker stuff? Oop, why did I do that? Well, that's okay. Just, oh, that's kind of nice. That was a happy accident. I love it when happy accidents happen. Uh, let's see if we could get maybe a light side for some of these trees that are coming down on here. That's kind of neat. Anywhere you can make color interactions without breaking the value of the form. So I have this <clears throat> middle value um, mountain bottom. So as long as anything I put in there isn't too light or too dark, it's going to be able to live in here and um, it will give you uh, quite a nice um, variation in, in uh, what's going on down here. So let's see, let's put a little bit more of it over here and blend it into where these trees are going to be so it gets lost. Okay, I'm gonna come back when this dries and I'm gonna touch this up and I'm going to play around in there and try to tidy up some of the branches that I made. So here's what it looks like so far. And I think it's coming along quite well. I'll, I'll put it up where I can look at it. Things that I wanna make sure that I make sure is that this distance between this, these two is not the same as the distance between there, and it's not, so that's good. Um, you know, I might want to just get a bit of, you know, some grassy kinds of textures happening uh, inside um, this space down here, because as things come towards you, they should get more detailed, but because I have this red underneath and I'm not changing value, some of that uh, can just sort of kind of live there and 
and be nice. I can put some more sticks in there if I want, but any more information I put in here is going to detract from up there. So I'm just going to keep this really simple with just um, a suggestion of the texture happening down here. And um, yeah, so I think I'm pretty happy with that at this point. So that's all I'm going to um, that's all I'm going to say. And um, so that was 45 minutes. Yay! And hopefully you guys could see better. Um, this time and a um, couple of things you missed on the end that got cut off last time when I'm finished I'm just going to move this out of the way and move my palette in here I just wanted to show you one thing about cleanup um, so I have I t told you I have these little houses that sit on top of my paint but when I made a mess like this if I have a bigger pile of paint let's say I don't want to lose this color Okay, I can pick it up on this cool um, spatula here and I can take it off and put it somewhere to keep. This is where my uh, I need my telephone book. Okay, so wipe, wiping my palette knife and my, my thing off on here. And then I can feel free to, you know, pick up and wipe off the rest of the paint that's um, sticking elsewhere. There isn't much here to keep. I, if there's enough of a pile, I'll keep it, but if there isn't, then I'll just um, mix it all together. And what I really like about this is when I mix these colors together as I clean up my palette, I'm going to get a whole new color that I haven't made before. So I, you can see it's all mixed up here. So let's see what happens when we make a pile of this. And we see what kind of new color this is going to make. I have to make sure that I get all of these pieces blended in. So I make a homogeneous mix here so I can see what color and value it is. So there's a light brown and I don't have that anywhere in my painting. So I can come back after I've done that and say, well, where can this live? What's its value? Its value is quite sympathetic with these other things. So maybe I can put, add a bit of difference just by having that color change that's not there anywhere else. So that's kind of a fun thing to do. It, I find this is a bit dark here, so I'm just gonna come back with the other color and just sort of mix it up a little bit more. I don't really want hard edges, which is a problem with this tool. You're gonna get some hard edges, but I can scrape back some of that and uh, and just leave the underpainting showing, which actually works quite a bit nicer. Maybe throw some twigums or some grasses in front of that um, little bit of brown there. So I think that, that that definitely adds a different note to the painting. It's a little cooler warm there. So that's cool. So then when I finish making a new color like that, and it's sort of spread out all over the place, then I'm going to take yeah, you guys can see that. Then I'm gonna take my scraper, get it all off, take a Kleenex, and just wipe that spot. And then I can come back and put this spot down. And I have a new color that I can use tomorrow and I'll just cover that with one of my caps. So. That's how I handle my palette after. I have big, big ones that will go over big piles of paint. This kind of pile got splayed around. I'd probably clean that up a bit more before putting the house back on top. But, And then when I'm all done, I'll take my nifty Armor All Wipes. Ah, it's going to be a run on Canadian Tire for these things, I'm sure. And then... I will, after all of the houses have been cleaned up, I will wash off my gloves. And you can see that this takes off all of the paint off of my, off of my gloves. I'll wash up all my tools. I'll wipe down my um, board so that it's my window so that it's nice and clean for when I come back tomorrow. So anyway, let me get you out of your holder. I will turn the comments back on. And then if you have any questions, you can ask me them. If anybody have anything they want to ask, you can put it in the comments and I will answer. Otherwise, um, I'll turn this off. I will post this 
on my blog. Thank you. I will post this on my uh, blog, which is on my website, which is www.sharonlynnwilliams.com. And you'll see in the in the band at the top, it'll there'll be one icon that says blog. I'm putting all the videos on there. Um, I'm in process with that. This video, as soon as I hang up, um, will go into my Facebook page, Sharon Lynn Williams Facebook page. And other than that, that's good. So I am will let you know um, later when I'm going to come back to do the finishing touches on this painting. Today's Friday, so maybe tomorrow. That would be kind of nice. Um, Gabriel asked, what do I use to sign my name with? That's a really good question. I will show you that tomorrow, okay? Anyway, guys, God bless. Have a great day. Stay inspired, and we shall see you later.